Hello, hello once again. It is my pleasure to be here this Sunday, this wonderful Sunday, on Victorious Living. Victorious Living is a program that comes to you on WEMA Online TV. We broadcast live on YouTube and on other social media channels, so you can check us out on YouTube, WEMA Online TV, talk to a friend, revive friend, Tell them this is where the message of Christ is preached. And every Sunday we bring you this program of victorious living. A believer is meant to live a victorious life. 100%. Your victory is already bought. It was paid for fully by the death in the resurrection, in the ascension and the glorification of Christ proved that now you have victory. When Christ died, he died in your place. He took your position. He died as though you died. He became your substitute. You were identified with him in death. And when he rose from the dead, you were also identified with him in the resurrection. His resurrection was credited to your account. All your past was finished. It was vanquished. It was totally obliterated. Christ rose triumphant. He rose victorious. So, whatever held you, whatever bound you, whatever was your master, was defeated in Christ Jesus. It does no longer have the power to hold you bondage, to hold you captive, because Christ has triumphed. And that is the basis for victorious living. The finished work of Jesus Christ is the basis for which you can claim victory, you can claim your healing, you can claim uh, uh, financial breakthroughs, you can stand on what Jesus has accomplished because it was accomplished legally, it was fulfilled in his resurrection, it was ratified, and when he rose and sat at the right hand of the Father, God had put a stamp of approval that your victory is a foregone conclusion. You don't need to fight per se that I need to fight for victory. You simply need to faith. So last week, we spoke about a place called hopelessness. And we spoke about a place called hope. There's a place where it's hopeless. And there's a place called hope because before someone comes to a place called hopelessness, they had hope before. And hope did not bring them to victory. And we said faith is what brings you to the victory that Christ has already purchased for you. And then we also learned that hope can never give you anything. It promises a bright future, but it can never take you there. But faith calls those things that are not as though they are and calls the things that are dead alive. Faith makes the dead things become alive. Faith makes hopelessness become rosy and the future. Faith turns around impossibilities and makes them possible. Now, this Sunday, we are continuing the same series, but now I'm going to title it, Now Faith Is. Now Faith Is. Now, faith is now. Faith is not for the future. Hope is for the future. Hope talks about a future. Hope says tomorrow things will get better, but tomorrow comes and things become worse. But faith is now. Faith does not talk about the future. Faith possesses the thing that God has promised and the thing that God has provided and makes it a present day reality. Faith makes that thing that is being hoped for by someone and makes it a present-day reality in the life of the believer now. Now, let's read in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verses 1. The Bible says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. You see, now faith is. Now faith is. We are talking about now faith is. Faith is now. Now, whenever you walk by faith, you possess that which you believe God for in the present, in the now, in the now. 
So, the things you hope for are in the future. The things you are believing God for are in the future. Your healing was provided for, but it is in that future if you're still hoping for it. But faith turns that which is in the future and makes it yours now. So I want you to understand those two distinctions. Hope is the future. Faith is now. Sometimes you may hope long enough and never arrive in that future. You may die in hope, hoping for a better future, hoping for financial breakthrough, hoping for uh, healing, hoping for blessing. But faith does not wait for the future. Faith possesses now. So Hebrews chapter 11 verses 1, the Bible says, Faith is the substance. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now faith is. Now faith is. Now faith is the substance. So faith is tangible. Faith is touchable. Faith makes those things that do not exist and manifests them in the realm of the natural. He brings those things that were impossible and makes them a reality in the realm of the natural. When you read from the centenary translation, it says, faith is the title deed, the proof of ownership of what is hoped for. Faith is the title deed. When you have a title deed, it simply means you own the land. You may not have gone to where the land is. You may not arrive to the place where the land is. You may not even have gone there. You may live in Africa and you own land in South Africa simply because you have a land title, a deed of ownership. So faith is like that. When you have faith and when you possess by faith, it means you now have a title deed. You have that which you are believing God for. You possess it now. It is yours now, not tomorrow. Your healing is yours now. When you pray and believe God, your prayer has become a present day reality. The Bible says, when you pray, believe that you receive and you shall have the things which you have prayed for. So when you believe, whatever you believe for is now. Now, believing brings that which was supposed to be in the future and manifests it to the present. In other words, hope delays your miracle. Faith makes it a reality now. Hallelujah. Some of us could be healed of sicknesses that we may carry for the next two years. Why? Because we are still hoping. We are still walking in unbelief, whereas if we believed the word of God by his stripes I'm healed, that thing which was supposed to take you to the hospital, take your money, take all your savings, keep you debilitated on the bed, keep you under lock and key, keep you famished and malnourished or uh, diseased, that thing would leave your body right now. So, the other translation, as I said, is faith is the title deed. When you have faith, you own, you possess now. You have that which you believe for now. And you see, so faith rests on God's word and makes those things which are not to become now. So the resting place of faith is that which God has spoken. Remember from last week, but one we learned that Abraham believed in him who caused those things which are not as though they are, and gives life to the dead, and he believed in that which was written or spoken about his life. So faith has a resting place, and that place is the word of God. What God has said is the basis for faith. Now, many of us do not know what God has said, or many of us have only given mental assent to what God has said. What God has said has never invaded our hearts, has not settled in our hearts. It's simply in our mind. So we believe God in our mind, but we don't believe that word in our heart. You see, faith comes, is the word of God that is deposited in your heart. What you believe God for in your heart. So believing brings you into possessing now. When you believe, you begin to possess now. Believing is possessing. 
I want you to understand that, that when you believe, you already possess. You have a land title. You have a title of ownership. When you believe the scripture in Isaiah chapter 53, verses 3, 4, and 5, that surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sicknesses, and by his stripes we are healed. When you believe that in your heart, you already possess healing now. Healing has become yours now, not tomorrow, not in the future. You cannot turn around and say, I will be healed because I believe. No, you see, you're still hoping. You have not yet faithed. You have not yet believed. Faith possesses that which is of the future and makes it a present day reality. Faith takes that which is promised and brings it into the manifestation of the natural now. Now. And believing simply means to act on God's word, to act on the word of God, to do what God says you should do. I want you to turn with me. You read there in your spare time, the book of Mark chapter 5 verses 29 to 34. You read a story of a woman who had an issue of blood in that verse. And this woman who had an issue of blood lived for 12 years hoping that one day a vaccine will be found, hoping that one day a doctor will find a cure for a disease, hoping that one day an angel will come from heaven and put an end to her misery and suffering, hoping that one day a wonderful person, a good Samaritan or a medical breakthrough will come from somewhere and will set her free. And for 12 years, she kept on hoping, she kept on waiting, she kept on believing, waiting. But you see, when Jesus came, who is the word of God? The Bible says, I am the bread that came out of heaven. So Jesus is the word of God. The Bible says in John chapter 1 that Jesus is the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the same was God with God from the beginning. And nothing was created without him, and through him, and by him, and all things were made through him. So the word Jesus Christ came on earth, and he lived in a physical body called Jesus. And the word was Christ. Christ is the spirit, is the person, is the word of God. And Jesus was his physical body. And so Jesus Christ, the word of God, walked on the face of the earth. And this woman who was hoping for 12 years finally met the word. And she spoke in her heart, if I may only touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. And you see, there's a scripture in the Old Covenant where they, the lepers, could touch the hem of the garment of the high priest or the priest. So this woman took the word of God and she said, if I may touch the hem of his garment, if only I may touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. So she came to a place that was beyond hope. There was no hope in her situation. It was hopeless. It was the the, the end of the road. She was at the dead end. She had come to a final stop in her life. But Jesus, the word, showed up in her little town. And the woman crawled on her feet. She crawled and thronged and pressed herself through the crowd, passed through the feet of men. And then she touched the hem of Jesus' garment. And the Bible says she was made whole. And in verses 20 of, of Mark chapter 5, verse, Mark chapter 5, verses 20, the Bible says, and Jesus, rather in chapter 34, verses, no, Mark 5, verses 34, Jesus said, daughter, your faith has made you whole. So what made this woman whole was not the 12 years she waited, was not the hope she waited for. Hope could not deliver her, but faith made her whole faith in the word faith in christ when she came in contact with the word jesus christ the word of god the bread that came out of heaven the balm of gilead her issue of blood stopped instantly why because jesus the word of god came in contact with faith so everything you need was provided for in Christ Jesus. The same way the woman touched him, if you touch Jesus by faith today, 
whatever is bothering you will live your life right now whether it's a sickness whether it is a disease you need to go back to our teachings on the finished work of Christ which come on Thursdays on a program called Teleo to learn what Jesus provided for for your life and when you learn that you begin to stand in that word and claim your victory so the woman with the issue of blood was not healed because she was hoping for something to happen she was healed because she believed she crawled on her feet she did something she thronged the crowd she refused the shame that would have come if she had been discovered and said i do not care what they think because it was a shame for her to touch the hem of jesus's garment it was actually a taboo if she had been caught she would have been stoned because she was an, in an issue of blood so she was in a condition that defied she was not supposed to come near people but she refused every negative taboo she refused to be hindered she refused the traditions of men those are some of the things that hinder faith the wrong teachings the traditions of men the lies of the devil those are things that hinder faith so this woman refused the taboos of old she refused the teachings of the old covenant that says if you are an issue of blood you're not supposed to come near a man and she thronged the crowd she did something and when she touched jesus in verses 34 mark chapter 5 jesus said your faith has made you whole your faith has made you whole child of god listening to me today it is faith that will bring you from that hopelessness to the place of hopefulness to the place of provision to the place of victory let's look at another story in the book of luke chapter 5 verses 17 <coughs> to 26 the bible says and in a certain day when jesus was teaching the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the teachers of the law were present and something else was present when Jesus was teaching. The Bible says, and the power of God was present to heal. Now, amazingly, when you have a crowd of a hundred people, even ten people, one of those people is sick, two, three, four, five of those people are sick, someone has a disease. And the power of God was present to heal, but in that crowd, no one was healed apart from a man who took when the bible says when they came and they found a crowd and they could not enter in they went to the roof of the house and removed the tiles of the roof and they lowered the man on a stretcher in front of jesus they refused they refused to be hindered you see when you have faith faith refuses all the barriers they are barriers that 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 keep you from possessing but faith negates those barriers faith negates the taboos of men faith negates the traditions of men faith negates the teachings that are unbiblical and and unscriptural faith refuses to be refused so the man broke the roof and he lowered the crippled man on a bed and the bible says and jesus saw their faith in verses 20 he saw their faith when he saw their faith the bible says he said thy sins are forgiven thee because he saw their faith so faith is what will bring you from that bedridden condition is what will bring you from that place of adversity is what will bring you from that place of deadness of, of the womb where you cannot conceive where your business is dead where you're under where you're downcast you have sunk to the bottom of the ocean faith is what will bring you out of there and remember we are saying faith takes the word of God and possesses it and says, this is mine now. I believe it. Whatever God has said is mine now. It is mine. I take my healing now, not tomorrow. And you see, faith has a language. Faith takes God's word and affirms it in the now. In the book of Mark chapter 11, verses 24, the Bible says, whatsoever things you desire when you pray believe that you receive them so faith believes that you have received 
now, not tomorrow. When you pray now, don't believe that you have you are receiving tomorrow. Don't believe you receive the day after tomorrow. Don't believe that someone will come tomorrow and help you. Believe that you have received now. When you kneel down and say, Father, I thank you because of the death and the resurrection of Jesus. And right now I receive my healing. By your stripes I am healed and I believe according to your word that I'm healed. So what do you do in that condition? You rise up and say from now on I am healed. Why? Because the word of God says by his stripes you are healed. You begin to speak a new language. You, you don't say I will be healed. You say I am healed now. You do not say I will be blessed. You say I am blessed. Why? Because the Bible says that Christ took a curse upon himself that the blessing of Abraham may come upon the Gentiles. Now, if you believe Christ, the blessing of Abraham already came on your life. So you cannot wait for the blessing tomorrow. You declare the blessing on your life now. You lift up your hand and say, I am blessed now. Remember, when you got born again, you simply believed in your heart and confessed with your mouth and you became born again. When you stand to confess, you say, I am born again. You do not say, I will be born again. I have never heard someone saying, I will be saved. They all say, I am born again. I am saved now. So if you are born again now by simply believing and you're confessing your salvation and saying, I am born again, you confess that salvation regardless of how you feel. You may still not have overcome certain habits. You may still be doing certain things wrong, but you are confessing that you are saved. You are confessing that you're born again. That is the same way. You see, you don't need to wait to change to say, I am born again. The day you receive Jesus in your heart by believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth you became born again so when you believe by his stripes you are healed when you believe himself took my sicknesses in his own body on the tree and by his stripes I'm healed when you believe that scripture you can stand up on your feet and say I am healed now it doesn't matter how you feel you may still feel sore you may still feel sick you may still feel bad but you keep your confession and say I am healed now I am healed right now your healing is now your healing is now not tomorrow not the day after tomorrow but now same applies to finances you believe god and say father thank you i have prayed now i have money now i possess now remember the title of this message is faith is now faith is now it's not tomorrow it is not the day after tomorrow. Faith takes those things that God has promised and possesses them and brings them into the now. You can rise up and say, I have a husband or a wife now because you prayed the prayer of faith. You see, when you're down and you're downtrodden and things are not working, you can lift your hand and say, I am lifted now. I am lifted now. I am not down. I am not defeated. So faith has a different language. Faith does not accept the language of defeat. Faith does not accept the language of failure. Faith cannot say, I have failed. Faith cannot say, I have reached the end of the road. Faith rises up and says, I am lifted. I am highly favored. Even though the evidence in the natural shows that is the opposite. Faith does not rely on what is evident naturally. Faith relies on what God has provided and said in his word. Remember the Bible says Abraham refused to consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. He refused to look at the impossibility, the, imp the, the hopelessness of the condition he was in. You know, So you can rise up and say, I am alive in Christ now i am a child of god now friend listening to me i'm going to close with this story one day a young girl was bedridden with tuberculosis she was suffering she had been on that bed for a number a number of years and she was a sick little girl and a preacher came to her home and they read for her isaiah chapter 53 and when she heard the word of god 
she asked her mother, what does Isaiah 53 mean? The mother said, well, it means what it says. And the girl said, does it mean I am healed? The mother said, well, you have to be patient. You know, the girl said, that if Jesus said by his stripes I'm healed, they, does it mean I will be healed? Or does it mean I am healed? So the mother said, the Bible says what it says. So in other words, child of God, the word of God says what it says, and it means what it means. God is not a master of double speak. God is not a master of double talk. God is not two-tongued. God says what he means, and he means what he said. So when the girl looked at the scripture, she told the mother, Mama, bring me my dress. If the Bible says I'm healed, then I'm healed. She put on her dress, rose up from the bed, and she was totally healed of tuberculosis. Did anyone pray for her? No. She simply believed the word of God. I have testimonies in my life where I have simply believed the word of God, and the word of God has taken me to another plane, to another level of healing, deliverance, provision, and favor. So rise up wherever you are and say, I am healed. And say, I am forgiven. I'm now a child of God. Speak the language of faith. Because the language of faith does not say, I will be. It says, I am. It possesses that which is supposed to be in the future and makes it a present day reality. You are healed now. You are set free now. All your sicknesses are healed now. I declare healing on your life. Whoever you are, wherever you are listening to me, I command healing in your body right now. Rise up and receive it. Receive deliverance from every demonic oppression. Receive freedom from every power of Satan. Receive it now in the name of Jesus because Jesus provided for it. Jesus provided for it. You are free now, free from bondage, free from sickness, free from calamity, because faith is now. It calls those things that are not and makes them a present day reality. You are healed now. Rise up wherever you are. Exercise your legs. Exercise your hands. May those blind eyes open and you see. May the deaf ears open and hear. Now, because faith makes those things that are not and brings them into your present day reality child of god wherever you are you are blessed stay tuned next sunday for victorious living god has already lifted and blessed you see you next sunday amen wow that's it faith is now so we believe in the word of god and we act on it See you on Tuesday, Wednesday for the healing school and Friday, Saturday and Sunday for the healing and glorified conference as we exercise our faith. And follow us on our social media platforms, Wema Online TV. Until next time, bye bye. Wema TV, the voice of hope.